Hi, this is Mark Hibben for Technomicon Media with a video update on the ASUS Transformer Prime TF201. As part of our review of the new iPad, we produced a video comparing the features and performance of the new iPad with the Transformer Prime. Some viewers did express concern about the configuration that we were using for the Transformer Prime. We were running with live wallpapers and widgets and operating it in balance mode. Now, I think the whole point here is to provide a realistic comparison of the devices the way we could expect them to be used by the consumer. And I think consumers are going to use live wallpapers. I, I think they're a cool feature. And I think they're going to tend to operate the device in balance mode since that conser conserves battery life. But for our review of the Transformer Prime in our website, we decided to go back and retest it using some of the suggestions that we received for the configuration of the Prime. And uh, I have it right here, as you can see now, uh, we're just running the standard ASUS wallpaper and we're not running any widgets. But before I get to the results of the testing, what I'd like to do is walk you through the configuration so that everyone understands exactly how we're doing the test. As I flick through the various panels of the home screen, you can see that no widgets are running. Also, the flame icon indicates that the Prime is running in performance mode. This means the maximum clock rate will be 1.3 GHz rather than the 1.2 GHz of balance mode, which we used in the previous tests. In the Settings app, we've gone through and executed a force stop and cleared the cache on all apps as we show for Amazon Kindle. In the Developer options, we have 2D hardware acceleration enabled. The Don't Keep Activities option was also enabled for the application launch tests, but not for Passmark performance test benchmarking since this caused the app to crash. In general, we left the Settings app running in the background. Once parked in the background, we found that it had no measurable impact on the performance tests. We start the application launch testing with Amazon Kindle, then Google Earth, Next, Google Maps. Then YouTube. And finally, browser launching. And here we retested the new iPad to ensure that both devices were launching identical pages. Next we look at navigating within the browser from the CNN homepage to the Technomicon homepage. And finally, we measured response time to our home page preview buttons. In our mobile device performance summary, we show three different configurations of the Prime. Configuration 1 was used for the previous round of tests and had live wallpapers, widgets, and was set to balanced mode. All apps were stopped using an app management widget. Configuration 2 was the same as 1, except that it ran in performance mode. Configuration 3 was used for the retests in this video. For application launching, Configuration 3 showed no improvement, 
over the first tested configuration and in many cases was markedly slower. For the SunSpider JavaScript benchmark, Configuration 3 was also slower, although Configuration 2 did show some improvement. Only in the Passmark CPU benchmark was Configuration 3 an improvement over Configurations 1 or 2 for the Prime, although it wasn't enough to better either the iPad 2 or the new iPad. In the review on our Technomicon.com site, I go into more detail discussing the various factors that may be impacting the Transformer Prime's performance, but here I'll just briefly summarize them. Uh, first, uh, JavaScript implementation. The latest build of Android 4.0.3 was used for Configuration 3, and this was a change compared to Configs 1 and 2. It did seem to take a step back in terms of JavaScript speed, and this was evident both in the SunSpider results and in the Technomicon preview button response test. Number two, Flash support. Of course, unlike iOS, Android does support Adobe Flash, and this did appear to impact page loading speed, specifically the CNN page load test. For instance, there was an ad that seemed to take a, a long time to load on the page. Number three, thread management. Of course, the Tegra 3 offers four processor cores, but Android apps may not be able to take full advantage of these for any number of reasons, including, uh, for instance, the app code doesn't support multi-threading, or because the OS itself may limit the number of cores a particular app can use. And then four, and I think this is actually the most important impact, the application architecture itself in Android. Now, to illustrate this difference between Android and iOS, I've prepared a simplified flowchart illustrating both the app creation process and the OS runtime environment. Here I'm showing the development flow for a typical Android app based on Java and using a third-party IDE called Eclipse combined with the Google-provided Android Development Tools plugin. The output of this process, unlike for iOS, doesn't actually produce machine executable code. Instead, Android inserts a Dalvik virtual machine into the front end of every running app. The purpose of the Dalvik virtual machine is to convert the Android app's generic bytecode into the machine code of the target processor. This affords developers greater portability, especially for Java apps with which Dalvik is supposed to be compatible, but at the cost of some execution speed. Google offers developers the option to develop code that runs natively on the target processor in order to improve processing performance, but this doesn't eliminate the Dalvik virtual machine, every app still gets one, nor does Google guarantee that processing performance will actually improve. Our takeaway from the new iPad versus Transformer Prime comparison was that the new iPad was the superior tablet device, and on the basis of the retests, we see no reason to change this. But let me point out that the conclusion wasn't really driven by the benchmarks or the application launching tests. I actually consider the performance differences between the devices to be pretty minor. Uh, our assessment of the Prime was mainly driven by problems with key functionality areas video output through HDMI, especially movie output, which wasn't there at all, the non-working GPS, and on our device, a partially blurred camera. ASUS has been working uh, on an add-on dongle to fix the GPS issues, but the GPS problems are now the subject of a class action lawsuit against ASUS, which just shows how widespread and serious the problem has been. We would like to see a fix for the HDMI movie output, which we believe could be done in software, and we're hoping to get the camera fixed on our device under warranty. Let me conclude by addressing the accusations of bias that were voiced in response to our uh, comparison video. Uh, we at Technomicon have absolutely no affiliation or allegiance to any particular platform or company, and we're not sponsored by anybody. I personally have no brand loyalty. I really don't believe in it. 
I own Mac OS computers and Windows computers. Uh, I own iOS devices and an Android device. Companies like Google and Apple are making billions of dollars off of us. And while they love to encourage brand loyalty, I don't think we owe it to them. Uh, our sole interest at Technomicon is to equip you, the consumer, with the information you need to make informed decisions about the devices that we review. Now, there is a widespread bias in the tech review business, especially uh, on the Internet, but it's a bias in favor of never saying anything bad about anything. Now, how does that work? Well, in the Internet tech media, there's an intense competition for eyes on page, and most sites try to win this competition by being first or among the first with a story or a review. Most of these reviews come out well in advance, as you might notice, of the product actually being released to us mere consumers, which means the reviewers had to get advanced samples from the product manufacturers. The manufacturers pass these samples out like candy because to them it's all just product placement advertising. Now I'm sure there's no explicitly stated quid pro quo, but there really doesn't need to be. Will a reviewer risk antagonizing a company that provided a free review sample by giving a bad review? Eh, I think most of the time they won't. So most reviewers soft-pedal problems or simply ignore them. Plus, the time pressure on the reviewers is so great that uh, the testing of these devices is often pretty superficial. So Stuart Miles can get on CNN.com and declare that the Transformer Prime is a viable alternative to the iPad on the basis of how much time did he spend with the device? Uh, it couldn't have been much. But probably millions of people are going to read what he wrote and actually believe him. That's not how we do reviews at Technomicon. Uh, we purchase the devices outright so we're not beholden to anyone. Uh, rather than being first with a review, we're trying to be the best and most technically in-depth and comprehensive. We're not perfect, of course not, uh, but we are willing to listen to constructive criticism and act on it as, as we did for this follow-up uh, video on the Transformer Prime. We'll continue to follow up on the developments with the Prime. Uh, uh, we'll provide updates on the GPS dongle fix when it becomes available. Uh, and we'll let everyone know how our warranty repair on the camera turns out. That should be interesting. And of course, we'll keep everybody posted on the status of the class action lawsuit as well, uh, either on our website or, or through video updates. This is Mark Hibben. Thanks for watching.